A year ago today, on March the 25th, 2021, a teacher from the Batley Grammar School was suspended after he showed a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad during a religious studies class. The cartoon was shown in a very specific context as part of a discussion on blasphemy, and it had been shown several times before. The teacher's suspension was driven by the cowardice of the school's head teacher after an unruly mob descended on the school, demanding action. Following his face and name being splashed across social media by a charity, more on that later, the teacher and his young family were forced into hiding. These death threats came just six short months after Samuel Paty was beheaded in Paris for showing exactly the same cartoon to his own French students. Today, therefore, marks a shameful anniversary for this country and for free speech. To this day, the teacher remains in hiding and in fear of his life. The cornerstone of any liberal secular democracy is freedom of speech and freedom to practice any religion or none. It is therefore directly against these core values that unite us that certain groups have undermined the very fabric of what it is to live in modern Britain. Last summer, the Reclaim Party went to Batley and Spen to hold a free speech rally ahead of the by-election. We invited both the Conservatives and Labour along to speak on this crucial issue of free speech and both refused to attend. Tells you something, doesn't it? This is not the Britain we want to live in. We cannot have an education policy driven by intimidation, bullying and death threats. Hey, hey. The following short film reflects the mood of Batley and Spen a year on. It also contains some rather disturbing revelations about the tawdry political machinations that have taken place since that dreadful day. In this short film, Deputy Leader of the Reclaim Party, Martin Daubney, speaks with Paul Halloran, a local and well-loved businessman, pillar of the community, who put his own head above the parapet as an independent, self-funded candidate for Batley and Spen. Paul came third in the 2019 general election with 12% of the vote and is a passionate advocate for free speech. Thank you for watching this. And please see the link to the Teachers Crowdfunder below and contribute in any way you can. We must all stand together for the right to speak freely so that we can pass that privilege on for our children to enjoy in turn. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. So we're here in Batman, Spain with Paul Halloran. So Paul, tell us why it's so important to mark this first anniversary of what happened at the Batman Grammar School. Well, it's obviously all centered around free speech. It's very important. It's a fundamental right in this country for free speech and that people shouldn't be canceled, especially educators who are actually doing their job and being seen to do their job. And how tough has it been? Because you know, the teacher in question, you know him personally. Yes. And you, you, you very bravely mentioned that on your Facebook post this week. How hard has it been for him and how is life for him and his family at the moment? It's immensely hard. I obviously can't go into too much detail, but as with anybody who goes to work one day and then is run out of their job and has to move away and build a new life, yeah, I'm sure that people can imagine how very hard it is for him. All major political parties, it was a hot potato, they didn't want to speak about it. The message locally is it's still very raw. This is, yeah. listen, it doesn't matter if it's one of our own, which is, it matters in the wider context within the UK and within the world. Now, I know it's not clever to kind of have a dig at Kim Ledbetter, the Labour MP for this seat, but she did make a few claims, didn't she, that she'd been in touch with the teacher and yeah. you, you, you've refuted them. Most definitely, Kim has put out that I can't remember the exact wording, so I need to be careful here, but that, that she has been in contact with the teacher. And I'm, whether, you know, these may be emails or whatsoever, but the, the inference is that Kim has a line to the teacher and she's asked that people don't comment on social media because the teacher or the, the wider family doesn't want that to happen. And that is not the case. I've spoke to the teacher and that is not the case. She doesn't want to at all at the time, was very silent, and since has commented on it, but Kim is, is in some respects hiding behind the premise that the family don't want it to be spoken about. Yeah. Now I'm not on social media every week, 
banging the drum about this. I'm respectful of the, the teacher's position. However, yeah. that has never happened. What are people telling you about their, their, their reactions to this one year on? Keep it going, keep out there, keep getting that message because as I've said all along, this could be my son, this could be my daughter, it could be their son, their uncle, it could be anybody. The mob, and there were the mob, the mob turned up at the school gates and applied immense pressure on the school yeah. and the headmaster cracked immediately. The mob determined that the pressure they put on ended up with the teacher having to go into hiding and it yeah. can never be right. And you also outlined something which, which is really worth talking about and that is this, this donation, this thousand pound donation. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, there's a, there's a charity based locally called Purpose of Life. And I, as I said in my statement, I use the word charity, you know. Loosely. Loosely, most definitely. So the charity Purpose of Life received a donation from the Joe Cox Foundation, of which Kim was the ambassador at the time before she became MP. And they received a thousand pound donation, roughly, give or take, um, a month after the teacher was forced into hiding. Yeah. Now that, in any stretch of imagination, is not right. This is a charity, don't forget, that posted the teacher's picture, his, his image, on social media, and also labelled him a terrorist. Not good. So to be absolutely clear, the teacher was forced into hiding, the charity called him a terrorist, mm. and the charity in question received a thousand pounds donation from the Joe Cox Foundation. One month later. Well, what does that say to you? And what does it say to the locals about the Inspan? I think the checks and balances out there. Why did they post that image of him on the internet? What were they hoping to gain by that? It stinks. It's, it's just absolutely appalling. But a charity, more in common, and we all get that, you know, we can all subscribe to that. I'm not saying here we can't subscribe to that, but why has this individual been singled out? And why is this charity that have done that being given a thousand pound? What's the appetite around here for, for real political change? We have a saying round here, and I, I, I wouldn't say it on camera, oh, but on. people all piss in the same pot, all the, yeah. all the politicians piss in the same pot. Mm. But I don't, I've never, I've never stood because I, I want to be a politician. I've no, it, it may sound crazy to people, I've no political ambition. I stood up because I'm a concerned resident. But people do want change. The key to it is to make change, is to get out and vote. Yeah. And it's overcoming the apathy to get people out to vote. In my own mind, people were saying you should stand you should do this and in 20 years time i can look people in the eye and say i stood up but i feel really emotional talking to you like this because I, I know you're a man of conviction i know you really want change mm. and it's so much more than just about batley and span it's so much mm. more than yorkshire this is about mm. the freedom to have mm. your own opinion i think people don't realize how important it is and it's everything that this country was built on I get lots of messages. I get more messages privately than I do on any post I make. And people keep going, keep going. I'd love to be able to comment. People have been conditioned to not say things mm. and we need to stand up and we need to fight. We need to put our hand up and say, no, that's wrong. Because it's not political, it's about free speech. I want my children and my grandchildren to grow up in a world where they can challenge people without fear of being cast aside. But people are scared of losing their jobs. You know, they're scared of the schools that the children can get in and it's this woke society that we've created will be the undoing of us all. So, so Paul, a, a fascinating aspect of the by-election mm -hmm. is that you decided not to stand yes. to allow the sort of cats and the bang yep. to fight it out. Do you think you might stand again in the future? I'm certainly considering it, Martin. And who might that be for? I think you're wearing the badge. <laughs> well done, mate. Beautiful. Cheers.